Hey everybody, what is up? Welcome back to Final Trade. I had a couple people in the last few weeks ask me what my thoughts were on the wider TCG market and just generally where we're going in the near term. And, you know, I, I thought the best way to answer that is to kind of talk about the whole macro environment of the economy in general. And that's what I'm going to do today in kind of a little different way than I normally do things on this channel. Um, I'm going to talk about an article and not read through it, but... Um, talk about some of the points in it and discuss how it makes me think about the macro environment right now, how that relates to the TCG market in particular. And, you know, I, I my August newsletter to my patrons was actually a much more in-depth discussion of this kind of thing, but I've been thinking about it for another month now. We have another month of data and another month of real world events. So we can kind of take a better look now that we're further along in time. And I promise by the end of this, I will loop back around to the TCG market and you'll probably learn something, I hope. So um, uh, the, the Fed as expected on Wednesday raised the key rate by 75 basis points to bring it into the three to three and a quarter range. And so what this means is that interest rates go up and basically the Fed sets kind of the basic rate for all lending in a, in a way it's really complicated and nebulous. But it basically means if you're a business and you're trying to borrow money to expand your business, it's going to cost more. The interest rate will be higher. If you're a consumer and you're trying to get a mortgage to buy a house, the mortgage rate will go up. If you want to buy a car, the uh, interest rate on the car will be higher now because the Fed raised rates. Now, the rates will not be three to three and a quarter percent. They will be higher than this, and it will vary depending on what kind of debt you're taking out. But essentially, it means that uh, borrowing money is more expensive, and when the Fed raises the rate to try to cool inflation, which is what it's doing right now, it's it the intent is that it makes business borrowing a lot harder, business slows down, um, that creates all kinds of waves down downstream in the economy, and eventually it can get inflation under control. Now, um, inflation clocked in at what was it like? 8.3% on an annual basis in August. And so basically that what that means is that if you took the inflation that we saw in August and you had that amount of inflation every month for 12 months straight, it would compound to 8.3%. So it was not 8.3% just in August. It was 8.3% on an annualized rate in August. So I hope that makes sense. Rewind the video a little bit if it didn't and listen to it a couple times. But um, so basically, uh, they say the job is not yet done. The open market committee anticipates ongoing increases, um, in the target range. And so essentially they're expecting they're going to need to raise rates one, maybe two more times of 75 basis points. That's going to put even harder brakes on the economy. At the same time, they say in this, this article that, um, the fed is unwinding its balance sheet. And basically what that means is they will be taking money out of the economy in order to, uh, destroy the debt that they hold. And when you take money out of the economy, it's another way of putting the brakes on inflation, trying to get inflation under control, because the reality is inflation sucks for all of us. And so um, really the tools that the Fed has to try to cool off inflation are bad for the economy. And um, in the medium term, they're probably going to lead to higher unemployment. And uh, the U3 unemployment number for August came in at 3.7%. What that basically means is uh, it was up from 3.5% in July. That's not bad. That's still a really good low unemployment number if you put a lot of stock in the U3. And I'll, I'll stop right here just to say, no, I'm not one of the conspiracy nutters who thinks every economic data number that comes out of the government is like a conspiracy and it's fake. I mean, if we believe that, then we basically can't trust any data from anything. So, um, yes, I, I, I think there are problems with the way the numbers are measured. But as long as you understand those limitations, then you can digest the numbers and understand what they mean. And they can be valuable to you for your analysis. But essentially, even though uh, inflation has been raging... And even though the interest rates have been going up and the Fed's been trying to put the brakes on business, unemployment has not ticked up significantly yet. And, you know, you will never have unemployment rates of zero, even in 
engineered wartime economies like 1940s Germany, the unemployment rate did not get to zero because you always have some people who are just milling about between jobs. But a 3.7% rate, even if it's up from 3.5% the month earlier, that's still very respectable and low. And so essentially what the Fed is trying to do, as they, they talk about in this article later, further down, is engineer a soft landing. And what that basically means is they're trying to raise rates just right, just enough to get inflation under control, not strangle businesses too hard by making it too hard to lend, not get unemployment rising too sharply, not get too many people out of work because that's its own snowballing disaster because when you're out of work, then you consume less, which means there's less demand in the economy, which means more people lose their jobs, which means business slows down and on and on and on, and it's this giant snowball. But the idea of the Fed engineering the soft landing is that, hey, we are so smart and so full of hubris here at the Federal Reserve that we will just engineer this perfectly and we'll get out of this bad situation. And I don't quite buy it, and I'm not going to say they're wrong or the right, but um, in my life, in my adult life, you know, I've I've been through the the dot com bust and the great financial crisis, and then a whole bunch of other little hiccups along the way. And this one feels weird and different. It's weird that inflation is so high, but the economy still seems pretty good. It's weird that when I sit and think, what do I think? two, four, and six months from now will look like, well, I think um, inflation will be getting under control. Will it be under control? Really, uh, probably not on the six-month time scale, but it'll be better. It won't be 8.3% annualized rates every month, and unemployment will be a bit higher, and, you know, the, the economy is going to have to uh, have some pain to come through, essentially, all of the combined money printing of the last two and a half years and get through the other side to where it can be healthy and start really growing aggressively again. And so how does that come back to the TCG market? Well, you know, the TCG market is kind of a luxury market where people spend extra money that they have. And so to the extent that we have had the cruel summer and stores had the fire sale boxes at a loss in order to stay alive until Double Masters 2022 gave them somewhat of a lifeline. Now what we're seeing is that uh, draft boxes of Dominaria United and even Infinity are being sold at a loss, both before the release dates. And um, I think this kind of weakness is just going to mosey on for a while longer. You know, I don't expect the bottom to fall out. I don't expect a financial apocalypse. And really on the long timeline, I am the greatest financial and economic optimist you will ever meet. I think the future is always bright economically. You'll have bumps in the road. You'll have brief periods where things trend down. You'll have job losses. You'll have uh, losses of capital and wealth at times. But when you zoom out to the charts on the long timeline, um, pretty much line go up. So, uh, I think that what we're going to see in the next two, four, six months is just this kind of continued lethargy in the TCG market. And earlier this summer, Rudy said something interesting. He said, every game needs to slash its print run heavily. And at the time he said that, I was really skeptical of it. And I thought, you know, maybe, maybe they kind of need to slash their print runs. And now I'm really agreeing with that. I've really changed my stance. And I think he was right. I think uh, they really need to cut back the print runs to put some scarcity back in the products, to support the prices, to keep the card stores and the distribution networks healthy. And so um, that's where I think we are and where we're going. Uh, there's potential that this winter could exacerbate things. It's looking less and less like that as time goes on. Uh, the European economy may dip into recession early next year. It's still hard to say. Uh, if they do, it'll probably be a minor one. And uh, natural gas storage is up to snuff, up to the levels that they wanted it to be at prior to winter setting in. So it doesn't look like, at least at the residential level, there will be gas shortages in Europe like we had originally thought. So those kind of things that could have really exacerbated the situation and made things much worse have been uh, mitigated to some extent. Also, the food crisis we thought we were going to be facing several months ago you know, uh, grain started moving out of uh, southern Ukraine again. And so it seems that we haven't really heard about that recently. Now, of course, 
if you look at your grocery bill, food prices are still way up, but it's probably not going to be a disaster that will snowball into all kinds of other terrible effects. So uh, to sum it up on the very, very long term, you know, I'm the greatest optimist ever. I think the future is always bright and that things will get better in the long run and always be better and better. We'll all get wealthier and wealthier over time. But, you know, the next two, four, six months, uh, neutral to negative is kind of how I look at things. And I don't really see it today as highly negative. So if you come back to this video in six months and the bottom fell out and you say, well, Craig, you were wrong. You, Well, you know, this is my assessment today. So that's how I feel about this. I think it's a great time to be putting product back in your closet, a great time to be investing in TCGs. And I think all of these products are going to do really well because as this goes on, as interest rates continue to rise, as the economy continues to get cold water dumped on it by the Fed, as unemployment slowly, hopefully slowly, ticks upwards, um, people are going to buy fewer and fewer of these MTG products, these TCG products, I meant to say, and there will be fewer reprints of each of them. And come two, four, six, ten years down the line, stuff from this 2022 era, I think, will do very, very well. And like I've said in the past, and I've shown with the data, Pretty much everything TCG does well in the long term, but I think these may do a little better because the uptake will be lowered just due to the economic conditions of the second half of this year. So let me know what you think about this. I'm always interested to hear y'all's thoughts, and I thought I'd do something a little different, kind of present parts of an article to bolster my argument. So like, comment, share, and subscribe. Join me on Final Trade, and if this is valuable to you, consider joining the Patreon. Thanks a lot, everyone.